Boogaloo Table fans, it is time, time for a War Machine bat rep. Oh yes, I love me some War Machine. And you know what? I've been sticking with this army for like six months, and I'm starting to like it. I'm starting to like memorize everything about it. I just know all the stats. Isn't that lovely? So Zane, on the other hand, look at him. So smug and self-confident. What can you do? And uh, he is playing this uh, studio... Mercenaries yes. army, right? and it's not really a, stu it's a it was a trade-in, yeah, it so it's good. just like how it arrived in the box from the client. It's client painted. It's up for sale. Yeah, great, great price on that too. So, uh, so Zane has Zane has his army over here. But uh, and how many points are we playing today? About Twenty-nine. We Twenty-nine. Pumped it up. Twenty-nine points. Uh, so um, we're going to go ahead and deploy, and then tell you all about it. Now, I might point out that this board is only three feet wide, and uh, four feet wide, and three feet long. So our deployment zones are only going to go four inches out, because normally they'd be ten. We're minus six inches per side. So uh, let's roll for option to go first. Four and one. So uh, I will go ahead and let my opponent deploy first and go first. And uh, away he goes. While we're playing today, we will be using our official BTP tape measure. Yes, that's right. You can buy them. Buy them today on our site. Check the link in the liner notes. That just looks that just looked like I bit down on a fly or something. Like you gotta close your mouth, there's a lot of stuff flying around out here. Oh by the way, this is Mason. Oh yeah. And why is Mason looking smug and uh, self -confident? I'm just observing. I'm kind of rooting for Zane here just because Are Sean you? has been talking a big deal. I have. I movie. have. We all know it's nothing. <laughs> we all know it's nothing. The reason Mason's happy is he made it past his week trial. Yep. And now he's in his possibly like much smoother uh, four-week <laughs> trial. So yeah. don't, don't screw it up, Mason. I plan That's my to. only advice. Now, my handicap in this game is that I have absolutely no idea what any of these guys do. That's also my I head don't head. know what his spells are, so I'm going to be surprised at every turn by, uh, by what pops up. Uh, my army is really pretty simple. I have uh, Kaya the Moon Hunter, alternate model there. I have Laris, that's the official one put out by Privateer Press. He's a light war beast. And a Druid Wilder, alternate model there. Two Warp Wolf Stalkers. And one Pure Blood Warp Wolf. So it is, it is all good on this side of the board. Okay, Mercenary Deployment. Let's roll. Pah. All right, I got a lot more models. Halberd Ears. Yeah. Gorman DeWolf, Rogue Alchemist. Yep, these guys are... War Jack of Here some are my kind. Arc Nodes. Oh, okay. oh, those guys are arc nodes? Yes, sir. Oh, that's um, fantastic. Keep them in my control here. My, okay. And um, who is that? This is uh, Magnus the Traitor. Okay. He's got a lot of cool Great. defensive Some spells. Riflemen. Keep the rifleman right. here. I'm thinking like... I'm ready. You know, just sort of sandwich him because he's got fewer models. Well, yeah, you've got to... Yeah, you got to bring the fight to me. Okay, so uh, what about the paint job? This is painted by, this is a trade-in, so someone else painted these, right? I actually really do like yeah. like the paint job. Uh, it's got this, like, green and metallic, and it's almost got this, like, brassy, like, or bronze, like, greenish corrosion and such. Right, a little which patina on there. I, I actually really like it. I'd, right. be proud, I'd be proud to have it. Thanks. All right, well, time, uh, time for me to deploy, and let's roll. This is going to be really short. <laughs> yep, that's right. I only have six models. Coming from the corner. Twenty-nine points. Yep, that's right. I'm gonna just line up right in the corner here. Get Laris going over here on the side. Put what's her bob right there, and uh, the Wilder in tow. And uh, now it's time to go. So you get first turn. All right. So when it's your turn, the first thing you do is you allocate focus. Oh yeah. All right. So you get your focus back your upkeep spells and uh, then you so now in war some people ask is our war, war machine and hordes compatible and the answer is completely absolutely 100 percent compatible uh, they've done a really good job merging the two games I wish they just had one name some people say warm hordes 
Uh, I, um, I just say War Machine, kind of to refer to both of them. The War Machine does have slightly more releases for it. And, uh, but there, it's very balanced. It all happens in the same fictional universe. And uh, these guys, Privateer Press, just uh, done a really great job low these many, many years. And uh, away we go. He's getting, his, he's getting his focus out. How many focus does Magnus he gets have? six. Oh, okay. And six, six is the uh, focus kind of like their magic points or whatever. Um, and six is on the low end. Eight is on the high end. I think some casters may have as low as five. Uh, same thing for War Machine and Hordes, except we have Fury. Uh, and I've already, I've already pulled out my Fury points here. Six Fury points. I put them on Kaya's card. And um, so that's what she uses to power her spells. Uh, but a, a Warlock, uh, by the way, I'm just chatting it up while he's making his move. Um, a Warlock uh, typically, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, uh, they, they don't automatically get them back at the beginning of the turn. They have to take them off their War Beasts. So if your War Beasts are all gone, or there's only one left, you might not get all of your Fury back. Uh, whereas a Warcaster just uh, automatically has that happen. Uh, but there is an upside for a Warlock, which is that to get your, get your War Beasts uh, to do special things, uh, you can actually put more on them, more Fury on them, than your Fury stat uh, would allow. The only downside being they might go Berserk. So hopefully I'll have a chance to show you that in this game. A typical opening move for a Warcaster is to put one focus on each of the Warjacks, and that will allow them to run, uh, which he's done with this heavy. I believe that's a Nomad. What's this guy called? A uh, Mangler. A Mangler. All yeah. right. I'm ready, for, I'm ready for the Mangler. Uh, might also add we're playing on this awesome terrain uh, that we made, and uh, this is for a client. This is actually shipping out on Monday, and... Um, this is, uh, this is duplicatable. We can uh, definitely do a set like this. I, I'm, I'm really, I think this is a great set of War Machine terrain. Uh, as you may notice, the, um, like if you look at this guy, the War Jacks fit handily inside there. Gives them cover and, you know, it's, it's, it makes for a very interesting, very interesting board. And uh, we are certainly up for duplicating uh, this set. It wouldn't be exactly the same, uh, of course, but uh, it, would be, uh, it would be similar. We might even think of a few things to do even better. So he's activating each unit in turn. Uh, there's four different types of units in War Machine. There are... Okay, so he's moving his guys up. Um, we don't, we're not counting this as difficult terrain to move through the interiors cool. of these, just maybe if you had to get over the, a low wall or something like that. And, uh, well, and you certainly could play it that way if you decided. Uh, forests are difficult terrain, and War Machine does it the old-fashioned way, which is to move four inches in difficult terrain, takes eight inches of movement, it's a two for one. Uh, there are what are called obstacles, and we have lots of them on this board. Here's one, here's another one. And those are, um, those are two inches of movement to get over them. So, for example, if a model were here and wanted to get to the other side, effectively making a one two-inch move, right, that would actually be a four-inch move. So it's, it's like uh, you're penalized for getting over that. And you also get a, uh, a bonus to your defense for being behind one. Okay, so on this jack, which is called a what? A light uh, these little ones are renegades. I got two okay, of them here. On the renegades, he's putting blur and temperamental. Temperamental. So, Tempering... Tempered metal. Yes. I thought you meant temperamental. <laughs> no, that'd be funny. Like he's going he's gonna to work sometimes and not work other times. Right. I hope that's so not the case. What, what is tempered metal? Uh, Temper Metal does plus two armor and is immune to continuous effects. Oh, that's great. And uh, Blur, he gains plus three defense against ranged and magic attack rolls. Oh, that's rolls. fantastic. Okay, go ahead. So go ahead and cast all your spells on him for me. Okay, will do. And I, that's my turn, I think. Okay, great. My turn's going to be super short. Mason, if you take the wheel there. Yep. Okay, great. I'm going to um, activate this guy here. And I'm going to run him 
Kaya's special ability is they can run without being forced. You just make sure I'm not more than on the net, what is it, four, 16 inches out? Yeah, I did actually move him too far by about a half inch. Okay, that looks good. And um, now I'm going to activate Kaya, and she is going to cast spells. She's going to cast Forced Evolution on this guy within six inches, and she is going to cast um, Shadow Pack, which gives her battle group stealth. Now, a battle group is the Warlock or Warcaster plus the War Beasts or War Jacks. So other guys, like soldiers and stuff, they do not uh, count as part of her battle group. And then I'm just going to move her. I can't run. Uh, by the way, each of those costs two Fury. So uh, she has two Fury left on her. Uh, now I'm going to activate the Warp Wolf Stalker. Run him. He moves six inches. So uh, I think I actually may have deployed a little too far out. I'll compensate for that now. Um, so here he goes. And I'm going to rile him, which means I give him fury for no apparent reason. Fudge that just a little bit. Uh, same thing here. I'm going to run him right on up. And um, lastly, I'm going to, oh, and I'm going to rile him for two. Now the reason I'm riling her, oh, uh, just uh, come, maybe, oh, actually you were doing okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just thinking maybe people couldn't see what I was doing over here oh, yeah. with all the things. Um, now the reason I have to do that is that she, at the beginning of the turn, to get her fury back up to total, she has to take it off of the war beasts. So I have to make sure I have enough fury on them. And sometimes you, you don't do anything with them, so you just have to put fury on them for no apparent reason. I'm going to run uh, this gal right here. There she goes, right on up. And uh, he's within 12, so I'm going to keep uh, Loris. He has a Pathfinder, so I'm just going to run him right over these obstacles and get him in here. Oh, can't you just imagine him like loping over all these fallen beams and rocks and stuff? <laughs> oh, fantastic. And thus concludeth my turn, good sir. We're What's back up. So uh, the, game, the game can go pretty quick. Uh, what I love about War Machine and Hordes is the low model count. Uh, that this, this mercenary army is, um, with just the addition of one other heavy jack, which, by the way, it comes with this lot, this particular lot. Uh, you're up to 35 plus points. I think it's 37 for this army. And uh, you only need, I think it is, maybe 25 to 27 figures in there. And you can add things. You can just add a you know, a unit here or there, and uh, slowly build up your force. So, good times. Uh, let's do it. Let's do a beginning of the turn. Yeah. So here's what happens. You get your focus back. You get six points back. Yep. Um, all spells then expire unless you upkeep them. Yep. I was gonna and say on the he, card. Uh, this guy here, he's resourceful. He can upkeep spells on models in its battle group without spending focus. Are you kidding me? He yeah. just upkeeps them? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Oh, that's great. Good for him. So, All right, so he's got go. six focus. This guy is still, he's under the effect tempered of metal. and tempered metal. Okay, great. So, uh, that's who will I activate? The, uh, Renegade there. Yep. I'm going to activate okay, these that looks guys. That's really cool. Okay, I'm ready. And I'm going to sort of just get into a battle line up there. Get ready to get charged, hopefully. Yeah, and by the way, I have no idea what those halberdiers do. Halberdiers! Halberdiers! I'm sorry, what's your name, sir? My name's Hal. Halberdiers. <laughs> what do you do for a living, Hal? Halberdiersman. Like he pronounces it right. It only sounded bad. Okay. All right. Um... Okay, so they are trudging their way through the forest. Yeah. Oh, I'm and I really sorry, like halberd these. Ears. These trees are nice. They are really super. Yeah. At least yeah, made all least, this? Yeah, at least did this well whole done. thing on her own. I like the little bases she did for them. Makes them yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, they do. It makes them heavier, and I don't know, those little yeah, rocks are just it. really neat. They really, right. th This village is so evocative. What else would it be? So his good move is to get his jacks up to punish me if I run in and try and just kill those guys for no apparent reason. All right. All right. While well, Zane finishes his, up his movement and his turn, uh, there's a, there's an interesting development here. Like I want to run these guys in and just kill those guys, right? 
uh, but forests block three inches of line of sight. So that means that, let's say my guy were right here, he could see this guy because there's only like half an inch of forest there. But let's remove one of these trees so you can see better what's going on. So, the, but the question is, this stalker, this stalker can't see this guy because there's like eight inches of forest between him and his target. Now I can cast a spell from Kaya called Dogpile, which allows my guys to charge that unit regardless of line of sight. But I don't think Kaya is close enough. I'm allowed to measure her her range. Oh boy. Anytime I want her um, control radius, which is 12 inches. So I measure that, and I actually think that's like 17 inches. So the problem is, if I move up 6 inches, and the range of the spell is 10, well, first off, at this acute angle, there's probably more than 3 inches of forest between a model that was, say, right here and this guy. See how it kind of clips through there? So the, those halberdiers are really excellently placed. And Zane, I don't know, maybe it's just instinctual, uh, has really started a close-in formation here, which is how a, a good game of War Machine is played. It's, it's not just one move ahead, it's uh, multiple moves ahead. Like, okay, go ahead and attack those guys, but now I'm going to punish you with this. But uh, what's helping me is one is stealth, so that means none of those guys can shoot at me unless they're within five inches. Uh, and also the forest. The forest can really help me too. Problem is, uh, there's really no way for me to charge these guys except this one right here. This guy can probably uh, make it. That remains to be seen. Uh, his threat range is, uh, I do believe, you look at the card, his movement is 6, plus 3 for charge is 9 inches, so I can't measure that, but I can measure her control radius. Uh, so... Quite frankly, I, I don't think he's within range. And, and that, and he could only kill like maybe one guy. And then I'd have that whole unit of halberdiers attacking him. And that is really not a good move. So unfortunately, Zane has left me with some, very little options here. If I continue moving my pack this way, the halberdiers could rush out, right? And okay, so I don't want that. But, of course, they're limited by the forest, too. If I move my pack here, and there's five inches of forest, there's no way this halberdier is getting out of there, even if he charges. Because their movement's probably only four. Six. Is it six? Yeah. Ah! Well, that means the charge would be nine, and then he'd have a two-inch reach. So he'd make it four and a half inches. That's about to here. And then he'd have a reach out. So if I keep, if I keep to the edge of the board here... I can have the forest protect me from any ranged attacks. And, but then the halberdiers could just retreat and form back at their own battle line. And then I'd be really squished up against, uh, against the edge there. So, All right, well, I've got some interesting stuff about to happen. Okay, I'm ready. I just activated him and moved him out. And he's okay. going to start casting spells. He's got all his focus. Okay, I'm ready. And I just saw he's got a really neat spell, which I've got to get out with this free upkeep. Um, I want to put it out as soon as possible. It's Iron Aggression. It's okay. three points. So I'm going to go ahead and cast it. Okay. If I would have done it, if I would have thought it through, I would have done it before I activated yeah, my heavy jack. Yeah, you could have already had that. But uh, target-friendly war jack can run, charge, or make slam, trample, power attacks without spending focus and gains boosted melee attack rolls. Ooh, that's so, sad. Dropping three on that, and I'm putting on Mr. Heavy Jack here. Okay, I'm ready. So look, put a little token That's there for the, him. Uh, the mangler. So next turn he's going to be okay. a bit more threatening. Right. Because I'll be able to run it closer or whatever. And I've still got three focus. So I'm going to cast for two snipe. And I'm going to put it on my friend the, um, the okay. rogue alchemist. What's the range of it? Uh, six inches. I think okay. I'm within. I should have measured it. Oh, I'm, I'm not within range. I don't mind if you fudge it. There's an arc node here, too. Oh, there it is. So, if that's six there inches. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. And, what does it do? Right. It, it's, um, that's why I put the arc node there. I didn't realize. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I thought of that earlier. All right. Uh, it gives him plus four to his ranged, uh, his ranged attacks. Okay. So it makes him a little scarier. And I haven't activated him yet, either. Oh, that's fantastic. I still have okay. one focus that is just floating. So yeah. Well, it adds to his armor. 
Right. I so, should have actually used go. it to run this guy. I'm okay. going to activate this guy. And smooth War him. Machine certainly is the game of thinking ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just keep him nearby just in case he's in the building. All right, now I'll move this guy up. Take advantage of that little corner there, maybe. Or actually, that's intervening. Put it something like that. I don't like that. I have no idea what he does. I know he's really good though. So he's this moved. Is Gorman D. Wolf, Rogue Alchemist. He's kind of got a lot going on. Yeah, a lot of different powers. Uh, and I just increased his range to ten inches. Okay. So, so Gorman DeWolf has Snipe on him? Yep. Okay. So I should put a token on there. Yeah, is that an upkeep spell too? Yep. It's free oh my gosh, he has four upkeep spells and he upkeeps his spells for free? Uh, he has, yeah, only two offensive spells really. Well, that's great. All right, well this guy... I doubt, I doubt I'm in with, within ten though. Well, I want to throw stuff at you, but... Well, go ahead, try it. What you can do is you can measure you can measure his control range and then make an estimate. 